Thank you. I'm going to pick up where Edwin left off. And we are going to look at the third section of this study, which has to do with service delivery at the central and the subnational level, but with a greater focus on the subnational level. And this first slide, I happen to like a lot. Um, and I think it's something everyone here is familiar with. And the issue has to do with overcoming fragmentation. And the fragmentation we have been talking about, that we see it at the central level, but there's also a certain degree of fragmentation at the subnational level as well. And what, what this particular slide does is very visually show some of the fragmentation among, at the municipal level, where um, you have a lot of municipalities clustering at one end. So basically, over 50% of Estonia's municipalities have less than 3,000 people. What does this do, or what does this mean? This has a very large impact on um, capacity, and it has an impact on capacity for delivering services. This is due in part to a lack of resources, uh, human resources, fiscal capacity, uh, and it has to do with a lack of critical mass. Now, there, and, and we'll look at critical mass, and we'll spend some time looking at that and talking about it. The, the issue with a lot of municipalities and, and the fragmentation that comes up with it is that it's not A, unique to Estonia, and B, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is a question of how it's managed. There are countries, for example, France has 36,000 municipalities. That's an enormous amount of municipalities. But there are a lot of structures in place that help promote the coordination and the cooperation to overcome the fragmentation and, and build the mass that's necessary. Um, what I'd like to look at in this, in this brief segment that we're going to talk about is focusing on service delivery and service delivery, delivery objectives at the central level, then move into the issue of building scale and, and this question of critical mass, and finally taking a look a bit at um, building capacity for, the, rela for the, the relationship between the central and the subnational level of government. So a, a look at what we've called supporting innovative service delivery. This, this actually takes, a, uh, takes us back up to the central level for a moment where we talk about uh, the importance of, of joined up work among the ministries, among ministries and agencies, when it comes to delivering services at, at the local level. Right now, what we've seen is that yes, there's a lack of resources, and yes, there's a lack of coordination that's undermining the ability of, public, of achieving public service objectives. Now, this is more than just you know, achieving I don't know, waste management or improving transportation. It, it, it goes over the whole spectrum. And it really comes, at least at the central level, to a question of being able to free up your resources to, for line ministries and, 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 and agencies to really focus on, on what, they, what their mandate is, which is to, deliver the, to, to develop the policies and to deliver the services. Now, one of the ways to accomplish this, and one of the things that's, that's starting to happen in Estonia but has been feeding this problem of a lack of resources and coordination is a need to further align or consolidate administrative services. And that's, that's the first element in these recommendations. And what we mean by this is, is aligning and consolidating the back office. So we have issues here of e-government services, we have issues of accounting, we have issues of uh, human resources. There's, what we see in different countries is that the way countries manage this is on a continuum. And at one end of this continuum, or in one part of this continuum, you have this issue of focusing on consolidation and the alignment. And this is what we're seeing in Estonia. And where one is on the continuum, again, isn't a good or bad thing, it's just where you are. Um, Estonia right now has developed its sh shared support services initiative at the central level to help start consolidating. 
It has um, also a subnational county level equivalent of this. So, so there's a lot of work happening in this area, but it can, it, it needs to be reinforced, and that's that's where we're going with this concept. A little bit further on in this continuum is um, this ability, this need for stronger leadership and, and a results-oriented approach to the administrative services. And to achieve that is um, a question of breaking up, breaking down barriers for joined-up services. Um, it requires a, a very much of a strategic vision and a strategic approach where uh, it's not a question of more centralization of services, but potentially a question more of greater standardization, where, um, for example, e-government efforts are more standardized. And there's also, in order to, in, in this part of the continuum, a need to coordinate the coordinators. So who takes the responsibility for ensuring that those who are responsible for coordinating within the public administration are, are achieving that coordination? And this also has um, an implication for the sequencing of reform. Finally, and at the most extreme end of this continuum of consolidation of, of, of administrative services, is this last bullet about increasing the user focus of, of public services. And that moves the whole question to the front office. And we see this in some very advanced countries when it comes to central service delivery. And those countries would be, for example, um, Canada and Australia. And I think those of you who were at the October uh, conference had the benefit of hearing Heather Backhouse from Centrelink in Canada. Is it Centrelink? No, Service Canada. Centrelink is in Australia, I'm sorry. Service Canada deliver her, her um, present her organization. These are organizations that manage to consolidate really service delivery to the citizens. They're at an extreme end. They're very user focused. Um, but they require a level of coordination and very clear accountability structures in order so that the ministries that are responsible for delivering, for, for designing the services, there isn't a, um, a disjointed impact between the delivering of the services and the development of the policy. So bringing us back for a moment to Estonia, um, Right now, Estonia, I think, is, is still at this need to align and consolidate and bring some greater alignment into its back office before it can start kind of progressing on the continuum and also identifying the responsibility behind that. Ultimately, the issue is how to be more citizen-centric and citizen-focused in the services that are being delivered. Now, that what we were just looking at was how to sort of pool your resources. So you pool your resources into aligning your into align into aligned administrative <laughs> services. Here we go to the issue of scale, and this is what we were looking at initially. Um, I think that everyone probably is aware that there's an issue of scale in Estonia. I think that's been a very long debate. Um, but in a sense, and, and, and this is a challenge for you, especially as you're entering a new, a new government period, perhaps it's not really an issue of scale. Perhaps it's not, that's not where the whole argument hangs. It may be an issue of the impact of scale on the citizens and the impact of scale on the ability to deliver services to the citizens. And that may be a different way to look at the same argument. So really, the issue here, as, as we know, is that the subnational capacity is threatened by these issues arising from scale and from fragmentation and, and this lack of critical mass. And that's impacting effective and efficient service delivery. So now, what is it that can be done? What has been done? What can be done? What are other countries doing? There's a, there, there seems to be an ongoing debate and, and sort of tug of war in Estonia between um, merging and cooperation. 
And the thing is, is that from what we see from, from the OECD perspective, it's not an either or answer. It's not do you merge or do you cooperate? It's how do you create the incentives that are appropriate and that are motivating for municipalities to make the choices that they need to make that can then allow them to provide the services more effectively. Um, just a note on this is that even if you merge, even if there are mergers, that does not exclude the need to cooperate. And one of the things in Estonia is that yes, municipalities are cooperating, but for some reason the results aren't quite what one would want to see or what Estonia itself wants to see. And this may also be due to the fact that it, the municipalities are so small that just two or three municipalities cooperating is, may not be enough. It may not be reaching the scale that's necessary. So incentive structures need to be put in place that can promote this at a larger level. Um, and that brings us to the, the, the problem and is that Estonia, like most countries, is taking a dual approach. It's taking an approach where mergers are voluntary and cooperation is, um, is promoted, horizontal cooperation among the municipalities. Most countries are doing that. Most countries are taking this approach because very, very few countries um, mandate mergers. Uh, and the problem that Estonia, I think, that we've seen in Estonia is that there's a lack of incentive. The incentive structure for mergers is very low, so municipalities don't really have a reason to overcome the, the, the difficulties that it takes to merge, because there are a lot of difficulties. Um, and there's a lack of sense of urgency on the part of municipalities, and there's a lack of guidance, and there's a lack of incentive, which can also sometimes be sanctions, for um, promoting cooperation or for for getting municipalities to cooperate. So here what we see is where the, the role of the center and the stewardship role of the center plus the role of the central government to create frameworks for cooperation, to create the incentive necessary, meets with the role of the municipality, which is to deliver the best services for its citizens and to create a, a, an enabling environment for the citizens and a, and a good quality and standard of living. Neither side can wait for the other to move first. This is, this is a situation where everyone needs to sort of move together and set aside their own differences to start looking and seeing what's best for the citizens with respect to service delivery. Um, this links to an issue of capacity there, it links to an issue of capacity at the subnational level. One of the issues is that, um, in some cases, there's low administrative capacity because there are just not a lot of people in the in the in the um, in the municipality. It also links to a question of fiscal capacity. Um, there isn't really any more money, so everyone's faced with doing what they have to do with the resources they have. But one of the things that we see in in Estonia is that there's very high um, spending autonomy on the part of municipalities. Municipalities can choose how they want to spend the money that they receive. There is not very high um, revenue generating autonomy among the municipalities and, and, and the, the capacity to generate their own revenue. And this is something that Estonia might want to look at because it, it could help um, make this whole issue a little bit more dynamic. There's, there's a question of capacity of, of national and subnational coordinating bodies. I think that the, the national associations for the cities and for rural municipalities are, have a wealth of knowledge and experience with how to work with municipalities and how to interface with the central government. Um, but I think that there's some capacity issues there that, that could be and should be overcome in order to strengthen the relationship and help move Estonia past this, this debate and, and into a next, a next stage. And finally, uh, with the, the question of capacity and the subnational level for coordinating bodies are the county municipal unions. And the county mun municipal unions hold an enormous amount of potential for um, promoting cooperation within the, the municipalities of the county. They could also hold a lot of potential to help promote cooperation across counties. But they're a little bit restrained and it may be um, 
a good idea to look at how you how the potential of these of these municipal county or county municipal unions can be unleashed. Um, finally, there's an issue of scale at the county level as well, and. Um, there, there, Estonia should also consider building scale at the regional level. There, there are a few ways to go about this. It's already being done with respect to front office uh, county level services, let's say. The, the Lanama State House uh, experiment is a very good example of, of starting to, building, to build scale. But there are a couple of other ways to do this. One could be, as some other countries are doing, is consolidating the administrative areas. Um, Another way to build scale, particularly for regional development planning, is not to be bound by your administrative areas, but to start looking at your territory from functional er as functional areas. So where are the areas that have similarities for competitive advantages for regional development? And finally, and this is probably the most theoretical issue that, with respect to the subnational level, is this, this need to build coordination capacity in multi-level governance relationships is create greater coordination in the relationship between the center and the subnational level. Um, one of the things that, that we see in Estonia is that it, it's not that um, subna there's in, always incoherence in subnational policy, but we have seen it. We have seen that and heard of situations where ministries, one ministry develops one thing, another ministry develops another, and they're both impacting kindergartens, for example, but it's, it, it's not very coherent. There are also examples of solid cooperation, for example, with um, youth programs, I think, between the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Social Affairs. But overall, Estonia may want to look at more formally integrating um, the various sector concerns and the various sector expertise with, uh, together for subnational policy. And a lot of countries do this. For example, in Denmark, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, there is always, they have a, um, a regional territorial development function uh, within a ministry, but that's supported with um, cross-sectoral, multi-sectoral committees to, uh, to make sure that policies start to align and to really start creating dialogue for more, um, more coherence in this, at the subnational and subnational policy. And it can also include uh, bringing the subnational associations into the debate so that you have a greater perspective on what's happening. And sort of as Edwin did with the first two parts of this, uh, of this presentation, what I'd like to do is use the education case study to wrap up some of the discussions that we've been having. And what we saw with the education case study, which was a, a really interesting study, especially because of the value that Estonia places on education is that it, it really highlights the need to improve municipal horizontal cooperation. And it's, it's by um, improving this cooperation that, the, that one can make the most of educational resources. For example, this can be done by um, sharing administrative costs for joint purchasing. It can be done by developing networks to support teacher development. The other, the other issue, and it, it's somewhat related, is, is taking a regional approach through cluster districts, is bringing the, di bringing the question up a, up a level. And with this idea of cluster districts, in a sense it's this idea of creating a functional area for education, where here services can be shared, where there can be a regional level discussion, and so based on the cluster district, the needs of the, the, the student population are being met. Um, and it can promote cooperation uh, and coordination among the communities and among the schools. There's also um, a, a, a need to better use analysis for more effective decision making. The, the Ministry of Education has enormous amounts of, of information and data and analysis on 
on schools and on, on what's happening at the, at the county and at the local level with, with the education system. The problem is, is that it's not necessarily translating into um, municipal capacity to use the information to make their decisions. So there's a, there's a need to start building that capacity and also a need to begin using that information to inform community discussions. So to really bring a, 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 an integrated perspective. And finally, this improving policy coherence through better stewardship, it, it goes back to what we were talking about, the concept of stewardship of, of guiding. And um, there's, there's room for more, for greater stewardship as well. And that can also happen with these more um, structured or what I was mentioning earlier about, um, about more formally integrated uh, dialogue at the ministerial level. Just to, oops, there we go. Just to, to conclude um, our whole presentation and is that in working towards a single government approach, I think Estonia should keep in, in mind and not forget its successes. It's been a very successful country and it needs to continue to build on these successes. In, in order to do this, however, and in order to, to really keep on moving forward and taking that next leap forward, let's say, um, fragmentation needs to be overcome. And this fragmentation is fragmentation at the central level, at the silo level, at the ministerial level with the silo, so it's this sort of joined up government approach. Fragmentation needs to be overcome at the subnational level as well. Um, to do this, that still means that there are reforms that are necessary to improve the cooperation at, in the public administration. And ultimately, at the end of the day, what is government here to do? Government is here to serve the citizens. And as, as civil servants and as, as, as public administrators, that's, that's the role. So it's also a question of reframing the issues around citizen needs. And, and, and to make sure you bring back the, the thinking and the, the debate, especially when it's getting stuck, to not what's best for the public administration, but what's best for the citizens and how are we going to be able to meet that. And so with that, I'd like to thank you very much and I'd like to thank the government office and everyone we interviewed. <laughs>